dear participants, uh, it's a pleasure to welcome you to today's FRH talk titled Sound Heritage, Tips and Tricks to Promote Places of Worship. I'm delighted to welcome uh, Mr. Daniel. Um, he's, uh, well, Daniel van der Broek. He's a CEO of Het Orgel in Vlaanderen, which is a member of the FRH network uh, that works to promote organs and in general to bring them closer to the public. Uh, as always, feel free to add any, any questions or comments you might have in the chat box, and there'll also be a Q&A exchange after the presentation, so you can um, share any reflections or questions then as well. Uh, many thanks, and uh, Daniel, I hand it over to you. Thank you. Yes, good uh, afternoon, uh, everybody. Uh, FRH and Jolly, thank you for the invitation to, to do this presentation. Um, yeah, I will also list, uh, let you hear some uh, music examples so you can see that organ is not boring music. I will start sharing my screen. Uh, so normally you see my presentation. Uh, okay. So this afternoon we are going to hear about uh, tips and tricks to promote places of worship by organs, but also sounding heritage. You can uh, do the same things with uh, carry on, and uh, that's that's the same way to, to think about it. And uh, I have. Why is my moment? Eh? I'm an organist and um, I know a lot about stops and, uh, and, and manuals, but not from technique. Okay, so. The, the second title is, uh, oh my God, we've got an organ, because many church councils think, oh, we have got an organ, a lot of troubles. It takes some time to change. Okay, so let's uh, start and keep calm. Let's introduce myself a little bit. So I'm Daniel van den Broeke. I studied at the Lemmis Institute in Leuven and obtained the Diploma of Floriot Organ. So that's professional organist to, to work in churches, but also to give concerts. And uh, also uh, education is uh, a part of the possibilities with that uh, diploma. From 1990 till 2030, I was organist at the Church of Lady Bird in Hoboken. And uh, since 2000, I'm working in the sector of organ heritage, first by the Flemish Institute for Organ Art, eh, Vlaams Institute for Orgelkunst. And in 2005, it merged with an Orgel in Vlaanderen, Orgel in Flanders. And from 2009, I'm here, the, the big boss CEO. I'm working here on, alone, but I have 20 volunteers who helps me my projects. So I will also present it a little bit uh, more the organization because it's a whole uh, way of thinking. When it started in 1990, they had some uh, goals and now we are 32 years later and we changed a lot of activities and, and the way of working. So it was uh, founded in 1990 as a nonprofit association in order to maintain and to improve the organ culture at, and the organ heritage in Flanders. Uh, at that moment, there was a, 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 somebody who thought it's very important to bring back the organs to the general public because otherwise uh, nobody will know about these instruments in, in, in after a few years. And between 1990 and 2000, the most important issue was the realization of the day of the organ and that were organ concerts with free entrance of other activities about organ on the last uh, Sunday of September. And the older activity was a two monthly printed newsletter uh, that the members received. In 2000, the office and everything moved from Bruges to 
Antwerp. Um, the day of the organ became a part of the heritage days, uh, also in September, but the second one instead of the fourth one. And uh, the result of start with uh, Flemish organ treasures, compact discs, uh, realizations. The website uh, was started and the magazine for um, changed from two monthly to three monthly and was named information magazine of or Flemish organ crashes. In 2005-2010 is a new period. Um, in 2005, like I told you, uh, there was a merger with the Flemish Institute for Organ Art, VIVO, and uh, I, I became uh, a volunteer here, but Organ in Flanders, and all the projects of uh, VIVO came over to, uh, to Organ in Flanders. So we had new projects like Flemish Organ Days, that's uh, a weekend or two or three days in a big city in uh, Flanders, where all activities were uh, organized like uh, concerts, uh, workshops, um organ uh, trips everything what what uh, was possible we organized another part was activities is summer activities it's uh, workshops on organs or uh, the possibility for non-professional organists to play on very big instruments everywhere in flanders or uh, sometimes in the netherlands and uh, also an activity was the monthly uh, electric newsletter that was a project of vivo and uh, now we had every month the electronic newsletter and every three months the printed uh, magazine at that moment i feel also the need to see the organs in a bigger place um, till 2005 we were a, a, an organization for our members with members activities members publications and uh, I saw that if we didn't see the organs in a bigger uh, world from cultural heritage, uh, the organization would not uh, survive uh, after a few years. So we, I saw it bigger. And uh, one of the consequences was that we had greater projects from one week uh, in, in cities with uh, exhibitions, concerts, activities, education. We were also partner of Connecting Arts was an European organ festival. And uh, we saw also new activities like advising and helping local projects that bring the organ heritage to a large public. Um, our office was till uh, 2018 in Center Elsenfeld, a Congress Center. Now it's a Botanic Sanctuary Antwerp, a five stars. Uh, superior hotel and congress center and uh, i was there to cooperate in the exploitation of the organs there are two uh, organs protected by law they were restored and now uh, they are used by uh, clients and uh, for weddings for example and i was there responsible for contacting organists and drawing up programs i will show you uh, an example later on and the other activity is now very important is to support church council and others. And I mean, it's uh, local uh, authorities in the context of the reuse of or churches, replacements of instruments uh, who have to move out and also the exploitation of organs. Uh, when you have an organ and you want to use it in, in extended use. Then in 2015, uh, a new project was started in cooperation with Orgel Kids in the Netherlands, Orgel Kids Project. It's a project to raise awareness by children and young people for organ. And we use therefore the Orgel Kids box. I will uh, show you it later. And uh, it, it, it was a project uh, thinking about two people, an organ builder who builds a, a small organ that you can move very uh, easily and a lady who was uh, busy with uh, educational promotion of uh, books and educational editor, and they found each other. And so they started the project. There was also a development of a digital application for children and young people, but it's not so uh, very working good anymore. And in 2018, we uh, 
published an uh, educational booklet at Orgel, the, the organ, for in collaboration with the Cathedral of Antwerp and Orgel Kids. And it's an uh, educational booklet for uh, children between 6 and 12. So they learn about the history of the organ, how it is built, the different types of organ, and also uh, an interview with the cathedral organist of the Cathedral of Antwerp. We also organize pedagogical, pedagogical seminars for organ teachers are annually with the cooperation of OVSG, that's the Secretary of Education of the Flemish government. And now the last, last uh, seven years, uh, further professionalization of the working and expansion of international contacts with FRH and also Interpret Europe. And there is now also an extensive collaboration with Parkum, Herita. Parkum is also a member of FRH. Open Churches, also a member of FRH and Monumentenwacht. That's uh, that are the people who are going to uh, look after monuments. Uh, what's what's the if, if there are problems about it? And since 2000, we receive a support of the Flemish government. So let's uh, start uh, for good. Uh, oh my God, we have a lot of problems. When I speak about organs, many people think that an organist is something like Santa Claus. Um, uh, this is the picture that many people think about that Cesar Frank on the organ. And you, many people think that organists are old people. And the second one uh, problem I find is that uh, everybody associates organs with the toccata of Johann Sebastian Bach. Yeah? You know, everybody went ta -da -dum, ta -da -dum, bum. So that's our two uh, things that people uh, think that that's the organ. And I want to tell you that it's not the organ. So we have a lot of problems. I don't tell, have to tell you that there are many religious buildings are closing. And for example, I will give you examples from Flanders. In Flanders only more than 1140 organs are protected by law. So it's uh, only a part because we have many non-protected organs and non-protected buildings in Flanders. You have to uh, understand that uh, after 1980, no organs are uh, protected by law, and uh, many organs are built after that period. Organs are viewed with a skewed eye. It's part of liturgy, very religious, old-fashioned, expensive to maintain. And the, the general is that unknown is unloved. Many people don't know about organs and therefore they, they, they don't like it. If uh, you can tell their the story, what, what an organ is, then uh, they, they look at with, with another view. So that was the wrong news. Now the good news. You can also play uh, other music on organs at the sublime music of G.S. Bach or uh, other classical composers. And uh, in other words, you can play all music on organs, even uh, modern music like um, Adele and uh, Pink Floyd, you can, you can play it on it. And I will give you a first musical intermezzo. So uh, I take another one. Let's find him back. So the first example, I will, I hope to see the screen again. Uh, the first um, music I will let you hear is a, a part of an improvisation organ concert we gave in, in COVID-19 period. And uh, we kept it uh, and we, we uh, sent it out uh, online. And it was improvisation. And uh, organist is Paul de Meyer from Ghent. Uh, is a very good improvisator. And um, he played uh, a few, the, the, the main theme was uh, folk songs of uh, Flemish folk songs. 
And uh, at the end, he played a, a quiz. Uh, people had to find out what's the title of the, the different pieces. And uh, it was a, 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 a small sinfonietta with uh, seven parts. And I will let you hear the first part to, so you can hear that you have other possibilities. So if you hear, don't hear it, please. So I'm going back to the presentation. So it was a good, so you see you the the possibility is uh, great that you can make it very happy music. Uh, it was based on uh, the song from Under the Bridge of Maldegem, is it City in the, the Flanders? There is a, a lady and then you had the whole story. So organs are example of technical ingenuity that was designed centuries ago. Uh, the ancient Greeks were the people who think about it and has lost for centuries. And also organs are a very important part of cultural heritage. It's what I already told you. Flemish organ builders from the past are world renewed. Uh, you find uh, Flemish organs in uh, Chile, in Peru uh, from uh, centuries ago. So we were very renowned like every country and every um, part of, of, of countries, uh, German organs, uh, English organs. And uh, perhaps organs and repurposing of churches is a compatible story. Many people think organs have to disappear and, and go away from church or reused, uh, but that's not uh, necessarily. So my opinion is unknown is unloved. Let's organize a date and that's how love can grow. So when uh, we receive here some questions about uh, reuse of, an, of a church, then I always try to convince the people, the new owners, that an organ is very, uh, can be integrated in redevelopment. So I try to enter, of, you can try to enter into a dialogue with the new owner and convince him of the strengths of the traditional organ. Eh? When you can go to, to new programs, uh, you can reach a new audience and exploring and drafting exploitation is possible. So the keyword or solution could be or is cooperation. And a few examples, um, you can cooperate with the music academy and use the, the church or the, the organ as a lesson instrument or study instrument of concerts. You can, as, as a music academy, organize concerts not only with organ, but also with other uh, possibilities of instruments. Another possibility is that you work together with culture department or Cult of Department of Tourism of the local authority and the cultural center. So they uh, uh, organize concerts activities uh, using the organ. For example, in St. Niklaas, uh, another city in uh, Flanders, um, the organ concerts are part of the cultural center. At the, uh, in September, they organize two or three organ concerts and uh, it's promoted by the culture department and the culture center. 
You can uh, cooperate with local social associations. They can organize an activity around the organ. And uh, you can also uh, organize an activity during the night of history of the night of the museum, heritage days. And everything is very important that it's a very, um, not, not, it has to be a concert. You can also give a demonstration of uh, let people see how the organ is built. And a guided visit is also a possibility. So now we are going to give you some examples. Um, examples in, uh, in, in the world is the Wanamaker organ in Macy, Philadelphia. It's the biggest organ in the world. There are two people uh, full time in service to maintain the organ and every day there are concerts. Uh, it's a very famous organ and place. And another ex uh, example is the Brewer Church in Zwolle. Perhaps you know it. It's uh, a bookshop, and you see the organ there, and uh, they are still concerts organized. When I see uh, examples in Flanders, uh, two churches. The first one is in Melle near Ghent. It's a church that now is uh, readapted, reused. And you can hire it as for private or public uh, events with the organ. And the other one is a reused church in Rekem. And uh, that's now um, the, the new owner is an instrument builder of pianos and, uh, and other keyboard instruments and shops. And there it can give concerts and also use the organ. So now I will give you some tips about uh, exploitation, what you, you can do with the organ. And the first example is uh, integration in events. And this is the chapel of the Congress Center Elsenfeld, now Botanic. So my, my office was there for uh, more than eight, seven, eight, 80 years. And uh, one of the examples was a client who hired the chapel. Uh, he was a builder of sectional doors for uh, uh, supermarkets and garages and something like that. And he put uh, four new uh, models of these sectional doors in the chapel. And every 30 minutes, uh, I had to play the toccata uh, from Bach. And then there was uh, the, the doors appeared and there was smoke and uh, potential uh, clients, uh, every half an hour, 20 people came in and saw the whole thing. But what for me was very important was the organs were used. The CEO from uh, Denmark of, of Sweden was there and he was very delighted that uh, everything was live, that you didn't use uh, compact discs or something like that. So in, in the in, in the chapel there, the, there are several possibilities. Another uh, integration in an uh, event is the cheetah run. I don't know if you, I suppose that in other countries, you have still also uh, running in buildings. And uh, in 2016, we were contacted because they were are running in two uh, churches. The first one is the chapel of Congress Center that you saw on the last uh, slide. And the other one was the um, Norway uh, church for sea people. Uh, meanwhile, it's not used anymore, but reused as uh, activity uh, place. And uh, we were asked to play live organ music. Meanwhile, people were running. So the people came in and four hours, I, I had to make a pool of different organists because the first question was, oh, can you look for an organist who can play when the people are running in the churches? And I said, oh yes, okay. And how long has it uh, take? Oh, four hours. And I said, well, I think it's better that the organist is running with the people because it's not so long as to play four hours. So we made a pool of non-professional organists and uh, every hour they changed in the two places. Another tip is to use uh, surprising activities because everybody knows um, the, the traditional organ concerts, but you can also do other possibilities like organ and circus. 
it was a project in the Netherlands and uh, you, you had a, a circus show in the church with live organ music. Unfortunately, the organist who, who accompanied it and was uh, part of the, the, the crew uh, died last year at very young. He was only somewhere in the 30 years old. So I don't know if it's still possible to uh, organize this, this uh, project. Organ and visual art is another possibility. Um, meanwhile, that um, Canto Ostinato is a, a very popular organ, new organ uh, composition was played. The artist made this visual uh, con concept. Uh, the, the, the organ piece is about 45 minutes. And uh, meanwhile, she realized the two picture. Um, we organized that in, in the context of Connecting Arts European Festival, because um, the Diocese of Antwerp was uh, existing 450 years and rebuilt 50 years. So they asked uh, uh, organ activities and we took there some projects like that. Another one was uh, organ poetry and uh, uh, other instruments. Uh, another surprising activity is organ and Tai Chi. A few years ago, Antwerp was uh, European uh, capital of sports. And in the month of the martial arts, they asked to do something with organs. So it was very <laughs> funny to hear about it. But uh, we looked at a, a concept and um, it was uh, organ music from Bach and Buxtehude with poetry. Uh, there was a poet who had found some um, texts about uh, Bach and Buxtehude. And meanwhile, the music was playing uh, to a, a group of Tai Chi dancers was uh, dancing. We organized it in five locations and we reached about 400 people. Uh, what's the very positive was that mm, it was all new public. I know uh, in, in Flanders, a lot of people who like uh, organ music and something like that, but I didn't recognize uh, instead one of two. And uh, what also was uh, very special um, in, in a few locations, people were also invited to, uh, to to do also uh, to to do also toishi and in one of the churches two other groups of, of the public uh, was starting dancing taishi of doing taishi other possibilities of uh, surprising activities organ and silent movie you know in the beginning of the 9th or 20th century you had silent movies and in the cinemas the music was live accompanied by pianos or organs um, i organized in 2019 there were flemish organ days in ostend and perhaps you know that james ensor the painter is uh, from there is also uh, buried in near the church of uh, of one of the churches of Ostend. So we found a silent movie on Harry Stork where he was uh, acting it in it. And I asked uh, Paul Meyer, is uh, also specialized in accompaniment of uh, silent movies, uh, in that church to uh, accompany that uh, silent movie with James Ensor and also. Uh, other, other movies about life in Ostend. Organ and poetry is a possibility. Organ and uh, instruments, vocals, choir, orchestra, everything is possible. And now it's time to get a second uh, a music example. I'm going back. So here, uh, let's see this one.
So now I'll let you hear a second part of uh, the Sinfonietta. Uh, it's another way, it's not so the, the big sound, but also very funny to hear. So let's go back to the presentation. I'm going back to the examples. So very interesting is also the children uh, shows fairy tales. And perhaps you know the story about Babar, the elephant. And it's a more static um, show. You have the pictures who are pro projected on screen and you have the storyteller. And meanwhile, uh, the parts of the story, there is organ music of uh, Francis Poulenc. So you see that's the possibility. Another is a show for children is New Fairy Tales. You have also Peter and the Wolf. Uh, new Fairy Tales like Bess and Mole. And that's uh, a new right uh, fairy tale about uh, the organ. It's very interactive. You see two ladies who try to go back in the ladder, with the ladder in the organ because they are uh, knocked out from the organ by Mr. Organ and uh, is very angry and sad because he's, uh, the, 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 the tune is not good anymore of the organ because it's not used any, uh, many times anymore. And uh, then the two ladies are going to um, organize a party for Mr. Organ because it's his birthday and the children have to help and to sing. And you see, uh, it's, it's, very, it's very funny to hear and to see. And also how the, the children are involved in the, in the show. Children activities, that's the left one is about um, Orgel Kids Box. They are busy with the realization about it. And we also tried when they have built the, the, the Orgel Kids uh, organ to go to a, a great one organ so they can sing and uh, hear how it is. They sing a, a song and uh, they uh, see and hear what's a big organ. And I will also let you hear a song about it. Uh, we have an, a national organ hymn. Wait, 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 we go back. Uh, we have uh, a, a two uh, teachers wrote an organ hymn for children. And uh, I had a colleague who made a stop motion movie, so you can see in stop motion how the organ is built and meanwhile you hear the children singing the song.
So let's get back to the presentation. So see, you can, you can involve children to new activities. And uh, another thing is uh, projects is exhibitions. Yeah, it's also interesting. We had, uh, like I told you in the beginning, two projects from uh, one week. Uh, this was a one month in Pusch, a, a city, and uh, there was an exhibition about the organs. And I always like to give a, a full uh, view about organs. So from the plan, how it's uh, going to work, the different parts of the organ, uh, manuals, pipes, uh, chest, everything, and also full organs. So that was in, in Pusch. And another was in Wilrijk. Uh, that was in the, in the city hall exhibition from one week. Uh, there were also activities, uh, Peter in the Wolf for the children. Uh, Orgel Kids uh, box was used by the Ac Music Academy. Uh, exhibition was there and a, a, a lots of activity about organs. And we have also information uh, that we can, let's see on the, on, on the people who wants to visit it. So what's very important is it doesn't have to be that serious or expensive. I mean, uh, you don't have to get big budgets to, to organize something about organs. Um, there are very non-professional organists who can um, play very good, sometimes better as some professional organists. Uh, if you, you can work with volunteers or with uh, the, the local authorities, there is always to find a, a small budget for organizing activities. And uh, you have to know that most of the organists are also very uh, self-relativating people. Uh, we, we, like to, we, we like a lot of drinks and beers and uh, food and, and, and many coffee and also a good joke. So. We are the, the only problem is that when when you play services in a church, you have always to to look at that you play music uh, that not not too funny because sometimes the the congregation doesn't like it. Now look, take a look at over the wall. You have, uh, for example, carry on. They have already a lot of innovative programs. For example, when somebody very new is deaf of of music music. The, the next concert is mostly uh, a program with all music of the, per, of the person. I, I don't know if you know the French singer uh, France Gall. She died uh, one year ago, I think. Well, next weekend, everybody's played uh, on the carry-on music of France Gall. Uh, other, the, the, the war in Ukraine, many people, uh, many carrioners played music from uh, Ukraine. And next concert, also a lot of organists played uh, music from Ukraine uh, in the services uh, when, just when the war began. What's uh, very interesting is to working together with partners and sponsors, local associations, such as the local community, breweries, very interesting. Um, in, in Turnout, for example, they work together with a brewery and after every concert, everybody receives one beer. So market concerts are a very good idea. Um, you, I, I, with with uh, shops from uh, food and uh, clothes and everything there and the church can be open and the organists play a concert in Sydney class again uh, every Thursday it's markets and uh, between 9 30 and 10 in the clock in the morning um, the organist uh, is playing a concert also a very interesting is that you made a projection on a big screen um, so the people in the church can see the organist working on the on the organ. Um, otherwise, you have only to listen, and after a while, it's perhaps boring. A drink afterwards is always very interesting. 
So what I always uh, find very important is the new programs always with respect for the environment. So for example, don't organize a striptease in the church with organ music. That's not, uh, not a good idea. And very important also use social media for your events, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube. Uh, like Organ in Flanders, we have a YouTube can channel with uh, some movies with organ or presentations or something like that. But uh, now we are going to see to start a TikTok channel uh, to reach uh, young people. An example of social media, the Bar uh, St. Norbertus Church in Antwerp uh, bought a, a new organ a few years ago, and they have a page on Facebook and uh, announcing concerts, activities, something like that. We have also a Facebook page. So then I come, you know, the first uh, part was about, oh my God, we have an organ, but I hope that after all these examples, we can say, thank God we have an organ. And instead of the man of Santa Claus, the man playing organ. And another also very uh, impressive picture is uh, when the organ of the Cathedral of Antwerp was restored a few years ago when it was uh, playing for the first time, the whole cathedral was, uh, was full of people. They had to close the door and uh, where people outside who can get any more in. So when you use um, the, the right way to, to make publicity and you have uh, an interesting organ, so you can reach a lot of people. And as conclusing, I will let you hear uh, a last part of the concert improvisation from by Paula Meyer. So I told you about the quiz at the end of uh, the concert, but uh, another part was, and I take uh, my notes, and had music machine results. And what was the concept? He had two heads with papers and in one on the paper uh, were small pieces of paper. There were titles of folk songs. For example, Green Sleeves was also one. And in the other head, you had musical forms like toccata, fugeta, dance, something like that. So the people in the audience had to take one paper on, from one head and another paper from the other head and we gave it to the organist and he played immediately, he made an improvisation about um, that uh, combination. So I will see you the movie uh, that uh, was used by the conference uh, a few months ago. Uh, let's see where I can find it. Um, I will give you also, the, there is small text in, in the beginning. I will let you see that you can read it. So you see, it provides a sonatine, a small sonate, to the melody of Fleming Giant's song, Als die daar zegt, die reus die komt. Uh, it's about the, a bit, little bit more information. It is a, a Kleis organ uh, built new in 1930. For this place in the Church of Our Lady of the Rosary in Wilrijk. Kleis is a very big uh, German organ builder who built enormous organs uh, last uh, sanctuary in that period in Flanders. And Um, the Catholic Church is now used by the Roman Orthodox congregation and they adapted the space with icons, but the Catholic elements are still there. And although they don't use the organ for the services, uh, they continue to care for the maintenance of the instrument and everybody is very welcome to play on it. And they want to uh, start uh, a cultural part in, in the church where the organ will be involved. So I announced the same thing that you hear and then we can 
Dus het volgende is misschien wel een contradictie, maar we gaan een sonatine horen met het reuzenlied als thema. So let's go back to the presentation. So again, young people at the organ. So I uh, finishing now and uh, I didn't know that yet and other questions and you see the the, the organ that's the place where the organ is, is on the Wanamaker organ so uh, the joke is fun, press any key to continue, uh, but it's the most biggest organ in of the world. Okay. Great. Many thanks, Daniel, for this wonderful presentation. Uh, maybe now we can open the floor for about uh, 15 minutes or so for any questions from the audience. So uh, feel free to raise your hand if you have any question or comment or reflection.
Okay. In the in the meantime, I see there was a, a comment in the in the chat by Anthony Ratanov, who was asking, "What is the most sacred sound of organ from your point of view?" So I think you mentioned this sublime sound of Bach, but I wonder if there's any specific tune or specific organ that would that you would find special. Oh, everything is, is it's, it's a very difficult one because every instrument is also uh, fascinating. Eh? You have small organs, we have the beautiful sound. You have the very big one where you can play a lot of music. Uh, also with, with music, eh? you, you have Bach is, is the most sublime when, when you hear Bach and you analyze this music, it's, it's amazing. But for example, uh, you have also Alexandre Gilmar, uh, he, he, he wrote a, a lot of sonnets, and uh, I can say um, two weeks ago I was in a jury of a music academy, and a non professional uh, organist played uh, the first part of the first sonnet. I, and I um, invite you to, to listen to it. He played it on a wonderful way because it's very uh, fugatic and at a, a certain moment you, you don't see anymore, it's, it's black of notes and he played it on a wonderful uh, manner. So it's, it's very difficult to, to say, some people, oh, what's your favorite this of what is of what is most sound? I say it's very difficult, very difficult. But still, uh, maybe you can try, Daniel. What, what, what is the what is the first sound come to your mind comes to your mind if you speak about uh, organ oh, but when, when the, the, the most beautiful piece of organ for me is uh, from von G.S. Bach on the Tritter Tyler Klavier Übung and that's the prelude and fugue in the 552 five, so I invite you to listen uh, and when you play that on a very good uh, baroque instrument eh, where, where it is built for Bach yes then that's that's heaven on earth can you can you write it uh, in the yeah, okay. text uh, because it's pretty hard to mesmerize <laughs> thank you great thanks i see there's a hand raise of uh, george allen and then maybe martin Renshaw. so uh, george please i I wonder if uh, there is any, uh, Daniel has any experience organizing um, access and uh, familiarization visits by um, aspiring would be organists who wish to um, develop their piano skills. Mm -hmm. Because one of the big issues we have in Britain is that organs are inaccessible and locked away in locked churches. And I have been asking everywhere in Britain if there is any experience from which to draw on uh, just opening up churches for days uh, and afternoons uh, to allow pianists to come and uh, um, try out at the organ. Uh, but there is no such experience in in Britain. Yeah, yeah. Well, in in Flanders, uh, when I, I was studying, it was the same story here. Uh, you couldn't get in in organs in in churches because it was too difficult to open the door. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I there was one church in in the city where I lived. And I was asking to the priest, so is it possible that I can come one or two times a week? Oh, no, 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 it's not possible because uh, it's too uh, trying for uh, his, his servant because then I had to, to, to ring and ask the, the, the key and open. And so so at a certain moment, I tried to, uh, to, with, with contact with the daughter of the organist. I thought perhaps eh, she can uh, talk. <laughs> <laughs> help me and uh, but there was uh, no possibility but uh, the, the the biggest uh, a joke was after a few months uh, they called me from that church is it was possible to play some services because the organist was on on holiday and then then you're then there is a no problem then then can you you, you can play on that organ but uh, we saw here in in flanders um all the churches receive money from the local authorities, uh, the church councils. Uh, it's, uh, we have still the law of uh, Napoleon in, in 1800 and, uh, and so on. And uh, uh, But we see now that the local authorities 
asks that the organs are used more than only in the lit liturgy, in services. And uh, so organs are now very accessible in, uh, in, in, in Flanders, but that's because the authorities and also the Ministry of uh, Agency of um, Cultural Heritage asks that organs are used. So that's a bit, perhaps an, an, an a possibility. I, I don't know how the, the, the consuls in uh, England receive money, perhaps from the people alone. Uh, I think you have to, to try with, with one other uh, local authority that uh, by law that, that perhaps can open doors. I, what was very interesting for in England is Anna Lapwood. I don't know if you know her. She's a very good ambassador for the organs and for the children. So that's perhaps also you can ask her uh, if she don't have uh, some IDs. Uh, Great, wonderful. I'm still yeah. interested. In uh, go, sorry, yes, uh, Martin Renshaw. Yeah, go ahead. Yes, well, can I come in behind my friend George Allen and say that uh, between him and me and three others, we are founding a new trust in England called Pipe Up for Pipe Organs. And we should be registered with the Charities Commission in London very soon now. And very much idea is to get organs to the people. Uh, if we can't bring the people to the organs, we take the organs to the people. And when I get back from where I am now, which is actually halfway between Rome and Siena in southern Tuscany, and I'm actually looking out on the hills where, where Pope Gregory VII was born a thousand years ago. He, if you remember, regulated music for the Western Church after the schism, and as the boyfriend of Matilda of Canossa, quite a character. Uh, when I get back to London, all my, my first job is to move an organ in out of it that is come out of a church into the public realm and that will be in a very public place and it's all very exciting and all the arrangements are being put in place at the moment uh, you'll hear more about it later not going to say okay. any more uh, the, the other thing is we're trying to get organs into all sorts of different places in fact and we have now some partners who are going to try to help us to do that the other side of things, looking from the other end, we have a, a trust in England called the Church's Conservation Trust, which now looks after about 370 redundant churches, which you were talking about redundant churches in Belgium. We have an enormous problem here in England with a church closing almost every day of the week over the whole of the British Isles. And the Church's Conservation Trust, as they've often said to me, is they can't get people through the door. But I say to them, look, you haven't got the organs in your churches actually working, so you can't play them, you can't entice people like a siren through the door. Not only that, you've got about half your churches at least without an organ at all. And we have tons of organs, we, small organs, we could easily move from all these redundant churches into their churches. So if you have a, a similar organization in Belgium and are you able to get organs into churches that otherwise don't have them, say in rural areas or whatever, it, it is a problem. But I think we will just have to keep pressing on that door. And I'm finding with the other things we're trying to do that, that always you have to go to the top. So for these external projects. We talk to the top people. We try to get uh, well-known journalists, broadcasters and others involved as well. And indeed we've made a 70-minute documentary film which is basically about moving a large organ from a mining village in the northeast of England into a black Seventh-day Adventist church in the east of London where it's accepted with enormous joy and currently 13 pupils in a church we didn't have an organ because when the church was closed as a Church of England church, the organ was taken out for heaven knows what reason. So they're overjoyed to have it and they have proper teaching, which is now funded by the Royal College of Organists and so on. So putting an organ in that church has made an infinite difference to, to that community, which had which knew organs a little bit in the past from their, from their roots, some in, in the West Indies, of course. 
and they were very glad to have an organ of their own and they actually helped to move it down move it in clean it and they watched it all being put together and that's so important because that's the other thread is that organ builders have got to get out to the public as well they can't just sit in their workshops and beaver away they have to do the public relations and they have to allow the public to take part in in the workshop in the work as much as is possible i mean moving a pipe or cleaning it quite simply is not beyond most people's possibility and that gets them involved and the organ in their church isn't just the organ in the church it becomes their organ yeah and that is utterly crucial i'll stop there because other people want to talk <laughs> yes in the in addition to what you were telling, uh, some organ builders here in, in Belgium use Facebook to let's see what, what the projects are and you can follow uh, every week they, they post. Uh, so now this is uh, finished and something like that. Um, another thing that we had uh, tried is to make uh, public organs where you are welcome to play. Uh, sometimes we started that because, like I told you years ago, you, you there was no possibility to, to get some access to, to some churches. But uh, at, at that moment, some churches were uh, you were welcome. So we made a list. And uh, but now I see that there is a, a very uh, good. Uh, it's it's totally different because be, uh, like years ago now you can play on every organ and uh, and when you can get in you said oh well, I will tell you to the days of this and then the, the church is open there is no problem anymore so uh, uh, mm -hmm. sometimes we receive here the questions from uh, okay uh, this church is closing can you look a new place for this organ and uh, till this moment now, I, I think I had uh, 10, 10, 15 organs to, to uh, move on and uh, every, every uh, organ received a new place. So, but I think with closing buildings uh, at a certain moment, it will stop because the, the places to, for, uh, to, to, to move down uh, will, will be not enough uh, anymore for uh, the amount of organs you will be will receive. And last thing that I will tell you about uh, organs who are protected by law, when they have to move on, everything uh, passes by the agency. So uh, when I receive a, a question about an organ, I always ask, is it protected by law? Yes. Oh, then I can tell you anything about it. You have to contact the agency in other way. Is it not protected? OK, and then we can see what's the possibilities um, for, for the future. Uh, one of the five sites was uh, a church here in, in a small uh, village. And uh, the church is reused by the local authority. And there is a very big organ uh, when you build it now uh, new, as, as new is uh, about 800,000 euros. And uh, the, the advice to the local authorities is please let it where it is and use it after uh, when, when you, you have the new use of the church. So, Yeah, the problem in England is that churches are, sorry, organs are not protected by law. Mm -hmm. Full stop except by in one or two or maybe three cases purely by accident. We do have a listing system, which is a government one for churches, which lists everything sometimes down to tables and chairs, but not organs. And that is another thing we are working on, yeah, including, yeah. including going back to what I said, working on the head of the legal official listing system. We. I managed to corner him at a conference uh, not that long ago. And we, we will have to keep battering on that because it's so important for us in England. We have a fantastic heritage of organs going back to about 1590 of working organs. And of course, as with Belgium, we've exported them all over the world too. But we are just not uh, uh, putting it, what you say in English, it, it, it's sans pas mis en valeur, en fait. That's the trouble. Yeah. They're not, uh, ex you know, uh, not used. Um, their value isn't, isn't explained to people. It isn't make, made obvious. But we will work on it. That's why we started the trust. They keep me in touch uh, with, with your projects. Sorry? Keep 
me in touch with your projects oh, and news. We, and, uh, we, we certainly will, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. No, we, uh, we, we will be very, very, very glad of your help, certainly. Thank you. And we've learned a lot from your talk just now. I've made oh, thank you. Five, thank you. five pages of notes. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Almost <laughs> perfect. <laughs> Mark, thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay, I see there's a hand raised. Uh, Sinsana Negovanovic. Yeah. <laughs> Ivanov. Yes, Nezana. <laughs> yes. Hello, everyone. I am uh, from Belgrade, from Serbia, and maybe. Uh, this would be interesting for you that in Belgrade we, we have two churches, uh, that is uh, Church of Blessed Virgin Mary, and the other one is St. Anthony of Padua, and both of them uh, have uh, organs, and they are active, and they have concerts and festivals, and uh, from time to time they have programs, it is uh, Published and announced in uh, in um, you know in media, so everyone can come. And as you know, uh, most of the people in Belgrade are Orthodox, Serbian Orthodox Church, but many Orthodox people go there too because it is very interesting and beautiful sound. Uh, so uh, I, I remember for years actually um, it functioned very well. And uh, they are very nice people, and uh, collaboration is very nice. Uh, uh, I work in the uh, Institute of Protection of Culture, Heritage, and both of the churches are protected under uh, the law of Republic of Serbia. So uh, I just want to add that probably you know uh, that we as uh, Orthodox people, we don't uh, use any instrumental music. No. Only, it is only voice, <laughs> and um, it is only uh, usually festival or choirs yeah, for public, that's actually, that is uh, one different approach. So if you are interested and if you want to be in touch with uh, people from Belgrade and especially from Catholic churches, then uh, you should know that uh, two churches are have, have organs and they function very well. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I was uh, once in, in Bucharest in Romania, and there you have also, uh, it's also very orthodox, uh, many orthodox churches, but you have also two or three Catholic uh, churches with an organ, with concerts. Uh, there was also a, the, a concert hall with an organ in, in Bucharest. And if you, uh, I, I will put it on uh, the chat. You have a, a database of organs, uh, orgbase.nl uh, in, in the Netherlands. And you find all, I think, about all the organs in the whole world. If, if you want to know if there is in Marrakesh an organ or in Peru or this like, you find it all there with the most of them descriptions, history, and you see also that uh, the, the, uh, uh, out, uh, from time to time, there is an update. So, for example, when I was organist in the in, in, in Antwerp, uh, did we made a restoration of the organ. And uh, when I was looking in the org base, well, it was put on it, and I played the org, uh, the, con the concert again with the cathedral organist, and every all, all information is in there. So, if you want to know about uh, database uh, of organs, org base print nl. Uh, you you find everything. It's it's amazing when when you see there. And uh, what's very uh, very funny here in in Flanders, we don't have a database of organs uh, on online. And uh, so when we need information, we go to org base. When there you find everything. Okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, I see uh, another question. Uh, Joao Cunha. Hello, sorry, uh, I, first of all, I give thanks, obviously, to this uh, community of uh, knowledge uh, regarding the organ, but uh, I would like to give a little bit of sample of information regarding Portugal, uh, 
Uh, regarding Portugal, we have a number of organs, uh, many beautiful churches, of course, so that, you know, for example, in the parish of the, of the diocese of the city of Oporto, we have 477 churches. And of those 477 churches, all most of them have organs. Uh, we have one problem uh, that I believe uh, could affect many of the opinions that we have here. Uh, in Portugal, there is the current movement is that um, the responsibles of religious monuments and, uh, and, bu and buildings that have organs uh, come across that indeed the uh, maintenance of organs is very expensive. And so uh, in their reunions, they normally um, gather all the information they can of the uh, enterprises that exist regarding the, the uh, maintenance and, and somehow uh, building organs. And there are a few in Portugal. In Portugal, we must say they are lacking uh, enterprises or companies that can do that kind of restoration. And so we have a, a smaller number of uh, budgets and, 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 uh, and somehow uh, opinions regarding the, the maintenance of, of uh, organs. And so uh, they came across uh, an ingenious way to uh, uh, in somehow manage to um, uh, recognize that this is the, the better option. I believe it's not the better option. We, we are losing uh, the correct formal hearing organs. Many of the cases, the many companies come across the uh, opinion to um, give a um, resolution so to convert uh, organ, the pipe organs, to electronic organs. So we have the uh, the uh, outer shape it's the same but in uh, the inside the organ we have the dismantulation of the uh, original organ and the uh, converting to an electronic organ in doing so uh, the companies uh, not only permit a uh, number of years of uh, warranty that they can uh, make their maintenance and so and the organs normally uh, are um, lesser uh, or fewer times uh, in uh, regarding a maintenance process. And so this is what is happening and we are seeing in Portugal, many, for example, Iberic organs that are being dismantled or converted to electronic organs. And this is, I'm, I'm sorry to say a crime because- <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> not with Absolutely. like form of hearing the the placement and the care of uh, in, in in placing in that church and uh, right uh, living organ that can uh, in somehow uh, inflates all that church with the surrounding sound that you cannot uh, in somehow manage to uh, in somehow okay this in is electronic form we can do the same it's not the same it's not the right form of hearing uh, and so we we i would just like to to state this this is a problem in portugal a uh, fewer companies that make restorations uh, and uh, the, in many cases the the priests and the, the religious uh, responsibles of many churches come across the uh, cheaper form of maintaining their organs convert them to electronics uh, we have many concerts in Portugal. Many of them are, uh, sorry to say, uh, only uh, they are realized only because of the the the, the patrocination of banks or uh, life insurances and companies that are willing. But we have a massification of tourism now in Portugal. But we are lacking not organists. We have plenty, uh, but we are lacking organs that do work and do have a plane of maintenance. Uh, in this case, just put them to work, put organists to play them, and uh, the, the organ will self-sustain for more time. But in many cases, the churches are closed to that kind of uh, resol resolution, by, as you can say. Uh, so we are very sorry to say we have many organs, but we need more companies, we need more information so that the responsibles of the church can take a proper action and a correct action, not a cheaper action. Uh, no. 
this is a problem in Portugal. So yeah, I, I recognize it because here in in Flanders, fortunately there is there is money. There are companies. Uh, sometimes we have a few not so good organ builders who try to to um, uh, do crimes like you tell. Uh, but uh, the the possibility is uh, that that org. Uh, like, like you said, the, the, the churches, uh, the, the priests don't have enough uh, information about what, what are the possibilities, also cheaper. Eh? But in, in when, when I was organist and uh, the organ I played on was uh, had to be restored. Uh, and, and as organists, they, they ask me not too much uh, qu uh, questions because they know uh, you, you want the same and you want and it will cost money, much money. So at a certain moment, I said to, to the priest and the, and the church council, listen, if you buy an electronic organ, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving immediately. And then they say, oh, OK, we, we are going to see that we find the, the money for, for the organ. Um, and OK, it, it, afterwards, everybody was very happy because the organ was uh, from the beginning of the 20th century, not protected. Was, there is no possibility to protect him. But it's, it's a very special sound. It's a very good uh, organ. And everybody is now very happy that they found the money to uh, restore them. Perhaps what, what's a possibility when, when you have, uh, I, I'm, I believe you're organist, when you have a mechanical instruments, uh, you can uh, perhaps uh, educate the organists uh, how to maintain on their own because mm -hmm. uh, to, to voice them and, and something like that. There are very uh, special things that organists can do on their own. Uh, when, when I arrive, some, sometimes uh, I, now I'm not playing so, so much anymore, but when I arrived and I heard, oh, that's, that uh, trumpet uh, pipe is not good. Well, I'm, I, I, I was on my own in the organ and, and I tuned it on my own. So perhaps that's a possibility. But in, in, uh, like you say, uh, information is very important and uh, also information that is not too complicated because when, when you tell them, uh, organs come from Greece and you, you tell the, the history about the technique and also it's another thing that yes it, it costs a lot of money yeah 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 okay it's a lot of money but you, you have your responsibility against uh, the, the, the the organs and and the history also uh, just just that you know and thank you for that opinion uh, one of the other problems is that uh, the organists uh, became um, they are very uh, educated and they have many degrees of formation in Portugal. But uh, the problem is that the companies, many of them, uh, manage to uh, state an afraid mode to the responsibles of that organ or that church. So don't touch the organ. If it's, yeah. it's not working, okay, we, so that they be in somehow obligated to just uh, uh, go to that company to uh, arrange. Yeah, yeah OK, yeah, I understand. The yeah. organists have a problem. The organists normally, yeah. they, uh, throughout the, 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 the many uh, the elements that they, that they, they uh, place in the organ, uh, they many, many times they ask, can I please do an affination mode to the organ and the, the response will say, no, 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 you cannot touch, you cannot uh, move anything. anything. And I, I think that uh, one of the purposes that I believe the social media has is that the, the possibility to in, in state, for example, tutorials, how to, uh, if we have more information regarding to little uh, maintenance process, of uh, affination, of uh, uh, cleaning, and uh, so that the priests and the responsibles can understand, okay, this is a process that it's uh, public. So uh, uh, I believe they can touch, they can move. And so we can somehow uh, uh, less restrain the responsibles of the church to uh, allow that organists that have the, the right formation to uh, become aware of the, the, the care and the need of care of the organs. So I believe is, uh, if there is uh, some kind of uh, structure, social media structure that uh, 
acknowledges people, for example, uh, to care about the organ in some, some aspects of how, for example, clean the, 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 the keyboard, the registrations, uh, how to accommodate the humidity, humidity factors, those kind of elements, I believe this is the information they are lacking in Portugal. And the afraid mode is always on. And so the organists many times are restrained not to use uh, the organs since it's not in the, in the 100%. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, because it, I, I see the problem uh, here in, in, in Flanders. Uh, normally, uh, organists and organ builders uh, is our good friends. I, I I know a lot of them, and I, I say, oh, yeah, the organ, oh, is that a problem? Oh, you can solve it like that, and not, so I don't have to come. Uh, or so we have also an organ builder. You can call him day and night. It comes immediately. Uh, is not very uh, it is very cheap you don't have to pay very much money and he, he, he arranges everything um what i want want to say here in in uh, in, in flanders we have a parkum uh, that's a member of uh, frh who was who is working for uh, ch church councils on the, and uh, sometimes they they organize a, a study day and I was already speaking one or two times to explain what the possibilities are for organ. So I don't know if is there some uh, organization in Portugal of, of from the DOCs uh, that that you can reach the people with with documents, with the presentation, something like that, uh, so they can see what, what's the possibility. Because, like I said, un, un, uh, unknown is unloved, and uh, perhaps that is also a possibility to work on it. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. <coughs> yeah, perhaps one last uh, comment, uh, Martin Renshaw, and then we'll I'm, have to wrap up. Or I have to come in again, but uh, I'm very grateful because um, if uh, your our friend in Portugal could, could get in touch with me and pipe up for pipe organs, it's on the web. All you have to do is type in www.pipe hyphen up. Uh, org org dot uk uh, we are hoping also to make videos for precisely that reason to show organists how to do the basics and uh, including cleaning keyboards tuning reeds oiling the blower and uh, anything that sort of happens chasing out the mice or this or the spiders or whatever and uh, it would be very good to have collaboration with you in Portugal and other countries which have similar problems, but in different climates to those we have, have in Britain. I do know the climate in Portugal because, in fact, I have worked in Lisbon several times, so I know the area. But uh, it would be really good to, to be able to talk to you and to people in Flanders about this problem because maintenance is at the heart of this of the problem everywhere, but sounds very much like the heart of the major part of the heart in Portugal as well. Thank you very much. Yes, I, I think that the story now, uh, very long time, everybody was thinking about it's my organ, my church in my village of country. But now we have to see, and, and some organists here in, in Flanders uh, said to me, what are you doing? And uh, organ part of cultural heritage and international, you're, you're crazy and, and something like that. And I say, no, it's the future. We have to work together in Europe uh, for organ building because it's also in, in danger here in Flanders between now and 10 years, we only will have one or two companies uh, left. And so we have to work together uh, in Europe, in the world, to uh, yeah to, to share expertise, to share ideas, uh, so we, we can uh, maintain uh, the 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 huge amount of organs. I want, I, I told you 1140 are protected uh, in in Portugal. You had a, a lot. Hamburg in in Germany had 500 organs. So if if you you want to count how many organs there are in the world, I think you it's it's impossible. So I I think and and to conclude is we have to work together uh, across the borders, across Europe, across the world, to uh, give the the organ. Uh, a future in, in the, for centuries, for the next centuries. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Daniel van der Broek, for this wonderful closing and, and summary. And uh, 
inspirational, optimistic uh, final. And um, yeah, I hope you all enjoyed this, this FRH talk. Uh, I found it extremely interesting and we look forward to welcoming you at upcoming events. And this will be available, of course, uh, on, on our YouTube channel and we'll share it through the newsletter, etc. So you can always share with other people that didn't have the chance to join today. So thank you very much and have a very good day and afternoon. Yeah, bye. Thank you all. Bye.